you are turned on to Midwest Outdoors magazine. Since 1967, helping people enjoy the outdoors. Sponsored in part by Rapala Lures, Shakespeare Ugly Stick, America's strongest, most sensitive rod, Northwest Ontario, Canada, Abu Garcia, quality rods and reels for life. This week on Midwest Outdoors, winter bass action from the Mississippi River. We explore summer fun at Crane Lake, Minnesota, and how to move fuel for all your toys with FlowFast. It all starts right here, right now. Hey, welcome to Midwest Outdoors. I'm Rapala Pro Brad Leiferman, and we have a special show for you today. We're out uh, fishing some warm water discharges in the upper Midwest. You know, all over there is uh, these warm water discharges, and these fish congregate in a big way on this warm water all winter long. And I got a couple of real special guys with me today. I got Andy Young here. He's a Bassmaster 2015 qualifier. And I got Elite Pro Zeth Fighter from Bloomington, Minnesota. And uh, we're a bunch of smallmouth freaks, and we're going to get out and catch some big smallies today. So join us. We'll be right back. Gotta get, gotta get started somewhere. Not a bad one, but. I'm Seth Fighter, tournament bass fisherman from Bloomington, Minnesota. Uh, I fish competitively for oh, probably 10 years now, mostly on local stuff. and. The last three years I started fishing the Bassmaster Opens and this year I actually qualified for the Bassmaster Elite Series. And he's hooked up. It looks like he's got some shoulders. Pretty big, man. Oh yeah. That is a big one. That's not, not too bad. I got that one on an Outcast Tackle Finesse Jig with a little wacky worm on it. I know they like jigs, and I know they like wacky worms, so I decided to put a wacky worm on a jig, and that's what it did. Working pretty good. Awesome. I'm Andy Young from Mound, Minnesota, and I've been tournament bass fishing since about 96. Um, I started started on the Pro-Am circuits here in Minnesota at about 2,000 uh, on the Pro side. So I've, I've been doing it for quite a while, but uh, two years ago, I, uh, I signed up for the Bassmaster Central Opens, and this year I actually got lucky enough to win one of them down on Lake Amistead um, in, in February, actually, this year, and it qualified me for the Bassmasters Classic. So, and, uh, it's, that was a life-changing experience, and uh, it's just opened up a whole lot of doors for me, and, uh, and here I am doing a TV show today. thought I'd show you what I'm using here for this live bait rigging with these minnows. Basically, these VMC wide gap walleye fluorescent green hooks. I'll put a little bead in the front, orange or green bead. And then I'm using some of this suffix ice braid. And what's really good about this ice braid is that it doesn't uh, absorb the water, so it doesn't freeze up like uh, normal braid does. So I use the braid with a suffix fluorocarbon leader, tying it direct with a J knot, and then uh, a bead, a green hook, and a little split shot. Hook that minnow right in, the, right in the nose, sling it up current, let it drift back, just holding your, holding your rod, waiting for the bite. The fish kind of moves up, takes it, give them a little line, set the hook, game on. Come on. 
Yeah, it's a nice one too. Jumping in December. Uh, there we got him. Nice, fat, healthy little bass. Fighting and jumping, he doesn't know it's winter. That's one nice thing about these warm water discharges. They keep these fish feeding really actively all winter long, you know. I mean, in the fish's eyes, it's it's basically fall all winter here. Water temps are probably mid 50s, and you can come enjoy a pretty hot bite in the middle of the winter. Just fishing a basic drop shot rig, running eight pound fluorocarbon to a VMC Sure Set number one and a VMC tungsten drop shot, three eighths ounce. You can go anywhere from quarter to a half. It's fairly shallow here, but the weight helps with the current. Yeah, oh yeah. There he is. Oh yeah. He wants to jump. <laughs> yeah, nice one. There you go, folks. Look at that fish. Another dandy smallmouth on the Mississippi River. Well, I'll tell you what, you get a chance to get out in the wintertime and fish some open water. There's nothing like it. You can't beat it. And all through upper Midwest, you have these warm water discharges, and they're full of big fish like this. So if you get a chance, you get out and try it. Till next week, I'm Brad Leiferman, Rapala Pro with Zeth Fighter, Elite Series Angler, and Andy Young, Bassmaster Classic contender. We'll see you next week. Looking for a great getaway? Visit Minnesota's vacation paradise, International Falls, Rainy Lake, and Rainier. There's more to see and do here than we have time to tell. The most popular attraction is our world-class fishery. Rainy is known for walleye, smallmouth bass, northern pike, and crappie. The walleye catch rate is five times greater than the average Minnesota lake. Bassmasters rank Rainy number 11 of the top 100 bass lakes in the country. Need more information? Log on to rainylake.org. Do you like fishing? Of course you do. Do you like free fishing gear? Of course you do. Here's your chance to win a free prize package from your friends at Midwest Outdoors. From now until March 20th, we're giving away a fantastic prize package every week, including a rod, reel, line, and tackle for free. Simply visit Midwest Outdoors on Facebook, click the win free gear link, and enter to win. Share with your friends for five bonus entries. We're picking a new winner every week, so visit us at facebook.com slash Midwest Outdoors TV for your chance to win. Who loves you? folks, Roger Cormier for Midwest Outdoors. Back in one of my favorite places to go fishing in northern Minnesota in Voyagers National Park, Crane Lake. And it, you can see why right here. This is my first cast. We got a glorious day, flat calm. And I'm fishing with one of my best friends, Scott Walsh from northern Minnesota. Get this bad boy in. Nice fish to start her out, Scott, huh? Yeah, nice one, real nice one. On top water on a skitter pop. Not a giant, but a dandy. Ooh, she's buttoned up good. Look at that. Big smallmouth. We're going to have a ball on today's segment, folks. We're talking fishing in northern Minnesota, Crane Lake. Stay tuned for some great action. This one showed himself, Scott. Yeah? Yep. Feeding on minnows up there on the bank, right in the sand. Was this chasing bait? Minnows jumping out of the water. Fish was jumping out of the water. A lot of them are well done making little bass and are putting on the summer feed bag now. And you want to talk about a fun way to fish. Throwing topwater baits is one of the best ways to do it. We're hoping to catch bass a lot of different ways today. And I also want to talk about the great walleye fishing here in Crane Lake. But we're just getting rolling this morning. And as you can see, we're on a hot bite to start it out. And that's 14 pound suffix siege right there. I like to use mono for my topwater. A lot of guys throw braided line nowadays, but I like that extra stretch. There we go. There we go. Boy, long distance hook set, yeah, huh? He's way out there. I don't, <laughs> I don't think he's real big, but come up and gave it a ride. Oh, he's all right. They're definitely uh, got a preference for top water right now, but it doesn't seem the type of top water really matters a whole lot. You know, calm days like today where we fish these gravel flats, shallow boulder and gravel fields where these fish are pulling up shallow. If it was a windier day, maybe cloudy conditions, you might fish off to the edges of points more, wind blown spots and we'd fish more with jerk baits, 
uh, swimming grubs, inline spinners, and things that dive a little bit deeper. But today, it's these shallow gravel flats and shallow shorelines that are producing all these topwater strikes. So they haven't really felt to me, it just keeps running at me. I always slowed down a little bit. A... Yeah, the old skitter walk. Skitter walk holding its own. I want that lure back when you're done with it. Not a chance. I'd like to take a minute here and talk about the Crane Lake area and what a great family and fisherman destination it really is. There's something to see and do here for every outdoor interest. Whether you're on a budget or you want to go more upscale, there's a lodge or resort that can take care of you. There's budget operations where you can go and stay on a cabin on the shores of Crane Lake, or you can stay in a more upscale property where you've got American plan dining, restaurants, lots of great places to eat here in town. There's some great local shops. Uh, there's a marina. If you bring your own boat and you've got any boat issues, they'll certainly be happy to take care of you there. Spectacular scenery here in Crane Lake as well, really a chain of lakes that you can fish. Crane Lake, Sandpoint Lake, and Namakin Lake on the Minnesota-Canada boundary waters. And you can choose to spend your entire vacation just fishing in U.S. waters, or if you've got a passport and the proper paperwork, you can cross by water and fish the Canadian waters as well. There is a, a Canadian customs operation and U.S. customs operation based here in the Crane Lake area. So something to see and do for every type of outdoor interest in Crane Lake and a spectacular fishing destination as Scott and I are showing you today. Yeah, you know that scatter wrap's got a got a real unique action. It's got that scatter lip on it and it's got a real wide wobble, evasive action side to side and you know, more closely imitates a bait fish that's trying to flee a predator. You caught the predator. Yeah, that's one of my, uh, one of my favorite ways to catch smallie early in the year. Um, Pre-spawn right, right up through post-spawn is uh, shallow cranks and uh, oh, my all-time favorites is probably a storm wiggle wart made by Rapala and now this uh, New scatter wrap is, is one more little weapon in the arsenal. We we're actually motoring down the lake to another spot and they're blowing up the surface in front of us here. And you see that a lot up in Crane Lake. Got yours, I got mine. Go, another double header. They're two at a time up here on top of the reef. This reef tops out in eight feet of water. And this gives you an idea how world-class this is. Unbelievable, just nice quality bass. Loading up on the reef. And that gives you an idea what Crane Lake is all about right there, coming to the boat two at a time. There's a pile of fish right there. Yeah. Now you fish all over northern Minnesota, but I know you love Crane Lake. This is still one of my favorite places to come and fish uh, big smallmouth, especially in the spring. Folks, you can make Crane Lake a favorite spot for you to go fishing in too. If you go to the website on your screen, cranelaketv.com or give them a call at the 800 number. They're going to send you out a packet of information, give you everything you need to know about vacationing in Crane Lake, Minnesota. Folks, with Scott Walsh, one of the best friends, I'm Roger Cormier. We'll be right back with more Midwest Outdoors. Let's keep fishing, bud. We'll get another us. one right now. <laughs>
Uh, life at the lake, living is easy, but not every job at the lake is easy. Today we're with Michael Franks from the Product Development Group. They're the makers of the Flow Fast, and they do have a product that will make your life easier at the lake. Michael, why don't you tell us how it works? So first, you're going to take the gas cap off. You're going to pull the safety tether out of the end with the plug. Put the hose in the opening, and then you'll hook that safety tether right on that cleat to make sure the hose stays in the opening. You know, you have three main components here. You've got a pump system, you've got containers, and then you've got a cart with pneumatic tires and wheels. And the cart system works great if you have elevation changes, a sandy beach, or potentially a little rocky shore. Yeah, the system is a complete and great way to get fuel in the boat. It's going to save you some money, and it's environmentally friendly around the lakes, too. Michael, what other uses are people using the product for? You know, we sell in the ATV and power sports markets, the ag market, the industrial market. We sell it for, for people using it in snowmobiles in the winter. So there's a variety of markets that we sell the FlowFast system in. Definitely marine markets number one for you, but let's go take a look at some of these other applications. Sounds good. Well, Michael, looks like we have moved from the water toys to the land toys. We have, and the FlowFast system was designed for the racing and motorsports markets. And you guys are still involved with racing. We are, we are. And, and whether it's a larger motorsport vehicle like this, it could be an ATV, could be a quad, could be a snowmobile, lawn tractor. They all use fuel, and the FlowFast system works great for refueling them. Yeah, a lot of these are street legal now, too, so a lot of people are burning a lot of fuel with them. They are, they are. And the, the other unique thing is that at the end of the year, if you have fuel left in the tank, you can just reverse the pump and pull fuel out, which Oh, that's is great. a great feature. Let's take a closer look at the system. Well, when we're talking a system here, you have a complete system to move fuel and fluids, but the pump is the key, isn't it? It is. It's an important aspect of the system. You know, we have three different models of pumps. Okay. We have an entry level, a mid-range, which move five gallons per minute, and then we have the higher-end professional model pump that moves eight gallons per minute. That's your best-selling pump. It is, and all the markets we're selling in, the professional model is our best-selling pump. What are the features that make that different? You know, the, it's got a spring-loaded mechanism up top here, and that is on all three systems. Okay. But this enables the user to spin the cap independent of the pump. And then if you have multiple containers, you can transfer it very quickly. Yeah, and most of your customers are running multiple containers. They do, they do. And then the pump body is made out of a plastic composite. It has three internal veins. Okay. It's double sealed. It has a steel shaft, and it actually has two bearings on that shaft to make sure everything rides evenly and lasts longer. Okay. And so this is our jug-only pump. Okay. And between the models here, we have a drum-only pump. So you can telescope this up and down the tube, depending on what size barrel you have. Mm -hmm. And then finally, we have a combination pump, which has the cap right here and then the bung adapter right here. So this will fit both a jug and a drum. And new for these this year, you've got a filter system actually too. Yeah, so the filter will fit all three different model systems. Okay. It's got a 40 micron screen in there and you're just going to screw it right onto the bottom end of the draw tube. Michael, why don't you show us how quick and easy it is to put the pump on the jug. First, you're going to take the plug out of the draw tube. When you come back from the station, you'll take your cap off, put the plug around the mouth of the container, take your pump unit, drop it on, and you simply screw this cap down until it hits that O-ring, and you can feel its seat, and then you're ready to pump. When you're talking about moving fuel or fluids, you're actually moving some weight. That's where your carts really come into play, Michael. Yeah, it does. We have two different size tires and wheels. We have a 10 inch tire and we have a 13 inch tire and wheel. And you know, the 13 inch tire wheel comes in handy when you have a long sandy beach or some stairs or elevation changes. It just makes it easier to move that weight around. Yep, definitely. And it's uh, when you're done with it, it's easy to pack away too. It is. And you know, we have an aluminum band that wraps around all the different <laughs> container sizes. Mm -hmm. We have a pin right here that you can pull to telescope this handle down. And we have a pin back here that you can pull the whole axle assembly away from the load plate for storage purposes. If you want to put it up in a garage or up in the rafters, it stores nicely and you can save some space in your garage. So again, to recap, any of the three models of the Flow Fast pumps will work with any other containers, whether it's the seven and a half, the 10 and a half, or the 15 gallon container. You want to pick your cart matched on your container preference. What I'm wondering, Michael, what do the different colors mean? So the blue is for kerosene, the red is for gasoline, 
the natural white containers for chemicals or hazardous materials. We're seeing them used in the ag market quite a bit. And then, of course, the yellow containers for diesel, whether you have a large lawnmower, a skid steer, or a tractor. Obviously, you'd pick a yellow container to pump diesel with. So whether it's an ag market use, marine use, motorsports, power sports, we've got a container that suits your needs. Well, there you have it, the FlowFast Portable Fuel Delivery System. Tell you what, it's going to make your life easier. It's going to save you some money. It's environmentally friendly. doesn't matter if you're using it in the marine market, the ag market, the motorsports market, or the industrial market. They definitely have a product that's going to help you get the job done. If you're interested in learning more, look up FlowFast.com. You'll see all the systems we talked about today, plus a full line of accessories for the units. For Michael Franks, I'm Greg Jones, and Midwest Outdoors will be right back. Do you like fishing? Of course you do. Do you like free fishing gear? Of course you do. Here's your chance to win a free prize package from your friends at Midwest Outdoors. From now until March 20th, we're giving away a fantastic prize package every week, including a rod, reel, line, and tackle for free. Simply visit Midwest Outdoors on Facebook, click the win free gear link, and enter to win. Share with your friends for five bonus entries. We're picking a new winner every week, so visit us at facebook.com slash TV for your chance to win. Who loves you? Your family adventure begins with Voyager Houseboats of Crane Lake. Explore Voyager's National Park with all the comforts of home. Voyager Houseboats provide fun for all ages. And now, introducing the brand new Voyager Lodge. Explore 14 new luxurious hotel rooms, as well as the new bar and restaurant. Log on to houseboatvacations.com or call 1-800-88-BOATS. The wider the magnification range in a rifle scope, the more versatile it can be. This new M223 rifle scope by Nikon has a six power magnification range and it excels on the AR-15 platform. It's great for varmint hunters, three gun competitors, or for home defense. This is one of Nikon's first illuminated reticle rifle scopes and it is an excellent one. The intensity level goes down low enough not to cause night blindness when you've been out in the field in the dark for a long time, and it goes high enough to not be drowned out by bright sunlight. The turrets on this M223 rifle scope are easily resettable to zero by pulling up, turning, and pushing down, and the giant wide field of view and super bright picture make it a perfect choice for any AR platform in any type of activity. This Nikon M223 one and a half to six illuminated reticle rifle scope and many other products like it are available at opticsplanet.com. I'm Steve Ledden with your Midwest Outdoors Tip of the Week. Closed captioning of Midwest Outdoors sponsored by Midwest Outdoors Magazine on your newsstand now and the all new MidwestOutdoors.com loaded with video, articles and TV episodes.